I mean, the Lee Wynn situation now has just been dragging on for so long. I mean, do, do any of us feel sorry for Lee Wynn in this situation, or is it just still get him out as quick as possible? The big question of the day is, do New England Revolution need their own stadium to further and grow the franchise? Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? I am back from the beautiful country that is Portugal, it's a week away, but we are back now for all things New England Revolution from a UK perspective. This is episode six of the podcast. Thank you guys so much for the support. We're going to get the admin bit out of the way from the off. So if you are on social media, on Twitter, then please be sure to go and drop us a follow over on Twitter. It's at NERevsUK. Uh, and hopefully you'll be able to find us on SoundCloud, hopefully iTunes, Podbean, Player FM. Um, I don't know. I'm submitting them and I, I, I don't know why it's taking so long. But hopefully you'll be able to find us somewhere for your eardrums to listen to. Now this episode really, obviously I've been away. I know we've played two games since then. I'm going to kind of go have a look back over this stuff and talk about the Dallas game. Um, uh, as well. And then just other things just generally in the Revolution camp and, and the stories come out of that. So the first thing, the first question of the day really for, for me is do New England Revolution need their own stadium to make the franchise grow further? For me, it's it's an easy yes. We can't keep, you know, having Gillette Stadium as a home as as, as nice as the ground is. It's a, it's a lovely stadium from from what it seems. But for me, it, it's definitely a yes. You, you need your own ground. You need your own identity. You know, you need it all. It just to be it, New England Revolution. That is where New England Revolution play, and it's all about the revolution. There, it's not you know in the shadows of the Patriots' glory and all this. It's it is about the revolution. It's the home of the revolution. And you also need it somewhere where the fans can get to as well. So a lot of people I've seen over on social media are you know, calling for it to be in Boston. I'm, I'm not really too sure about that kind of side of things. I mean, obviously, I don't know how, you know the logistics of it all. But I, I felt for one, for me, it, it's got to be 100%. We need our own ground. We can't just keep... You know, playing games in in the Patriots' ground. It's it's not our ground. It's 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 you know decorated in in for them. It's all about them. It's you know we, we dress it up a little bit, but it's still all about Patriots. Whenever you go there, and and as I've mentioned a, a few times now, it it has got to be slightly disheartening for the team when when they go into the ground. And yes, you know the fork can be loud sometimes, and but it, it's. You're looking around the ground and it's it's over half empty. Obviously, I'm not again. I'm not expecting us to ever fill that ground, but it has got to be slightly demoralising for the players when you uh, when it's a home game. And, and and for me, from from reports I've been reading, you know, the fort has hasn't been as loud and as it has been, which which is slightly concerning because you know we're we're actually performing quite well. Obviously, yes, we've had a hiccup against Dallas, but it, it wasn't the. It, a terrible performance, and we'll, we'll touch on that in in a short while. But you know, before that, it was a four nil victory against Montreal. Before that, a two two draw against uh, New York City, a very very strong team. Before that, a two one victory against the Rapids. You know, it's we have performed well there, and we performed well there last season as well. Um, so hopefully now the, the weather's starting to brighten up, and the fans will. Comments, but it shouldn't be anything about whether it should just be you want to support your team. But I can understand, you know, that maybe first game of the season. But even then, like, you know, we've got a new coach, head coach involved. You'd think that the fans would want to come out and see them. Um, a lot of new players did well during pre season. So I don't, I don't know what it is. Um, I mean, is, is, is getting their own stadium the answer to, you know, a lot of problems going on with the revolution? No, it's not the answer to a lot of them. But it is a massive step forward and just shows the, you know, that really for me, as much as the, a lot of people will hate the ownership, I think if, if this is the step that they were to take, this would, would get a lot of people's trust back on, on on side and, you know, show them that they are, you know, it, it, it it's not just, you know, in the shadow of, of the Patriots, you know, that they are thinking about, Natural revolutions as a as a separate entity and 
hopefully looking to you know invest money in and and help the club grow because it, it, it could be a huge franchise it could be a huge huge mls franchise but i think the first step we need we've seen kind of news come out that the academies that they're, they're investing in the academy and steps to be taken to improve the academy so I, I touched on a few episodes ago which is great to hear but now they've now got to take that next step and, and just get our own ground we need our own ground our own identity we need a, a hub of all things doing the revolution but obviously, guys, I kind of want to hear your thoughts. Get involved as much as you can. Tweet me over on social media. Drop me a comment on wherever you're listening to this, over on SoundCloud or or, or wherever. Just let, let me know your thoughts on that one because I'd be really interested to, to hear what your thoughts are on that one as well. Uh, before we kind of obviously go, talk about the, the games and, and kind of my predictions for the game against Columbus, I also just want to talk to you about uh, the ongoing Lee Win saga. I mean, for me, the saga's been dragging on for quite a while now. Does anyone out there feel sorry for for Lee Wynn in this situation. I mean, is it... Does anyone feel sorry for him out there? Because, you know, it's... If you think about it, at the end of the day, he's asked for a transfer, a trade, sorry, at the start of the season, maybe at the start of last season, but definitely at the start of this season. Um, Friedel, more than his right to say no, but then he's not using him. Now, obviously, I don't know what's going on in training. I know, obviously, he missed pre-season, but reports have heard that he's, he's back in training and maybe he's performing, so... Yes, you don't want to take you know Diego out because he's well. The last two games he hasn't been, especially the last game he hasn't been uh, kind of you know up to the performances of, of the previous games. But you don't want to take him out. You don't you know. Um, and where does where, where does Win fit in to this? Do you put him out on the right? Is that an option? Um, I don't know. I just think the whole situation's not been handled the best from from either side, side really. I mean, Lee Wynn, too fair to him, he has kind of kept quiet recently about it. He's not really, you know, said too much. He just said he kind of wants to knuckle down if, he, if, he's, if he's here, you know, he'll train and he'll, com- you know, commit to playing as, as well as he can. But from my point of view now, I think Brad just needs to... I mean, supposedly we turned down 750,000 in in uh, in TAM. I'm not too sure how, how true that report is. Um, but if it was true, I think that... That was a good offer. It was a decent offer for him, I th- and especially if he's lo- not looking to u- utilise him at all. Because you still can't take away the fact that he is a very, very talented player. So to not utilise him, and then not to trade him, just seems a bit. I don't know. It all seems a bit strange, in my opinion. So not too sure what what the the reason or thoughts behind behind that is. Um, but yeah, again, just really interested to kind of hear your guys' thoughts on what, what you think about the whole situation. Now, I'm going to just very quickly kind of go over the games. Obviously, we, you know, played two games since we was last together as such. Um, picked up a, a 4 0 victory over, uh, well, not over, it was, it was at Foxborough against Montreal Impact. Uh, obviously, you know, they got a red card. Uh, seems to be a, a common theme at the moment that a team that plays against us seems to be cards involved in, in a match, either it's a revolution player getting sent off or, or an opposition player. Player sent off for them in the 14th minute. Uh, obviously, Bunbury grabbing a goal for with a, a, a very well played ball over the top uh, from Zahibo. Andrew Farrell grabbing his first goal, and they went absolutely crazy uh, for the revolution. Obviously, just before half time, a lovely assist from uh, Fundungues with that one. We then seen the second half again, really solid performance. Like, I know we're against 10 men, but I still think you know, we was playing very, very good football, uh, very good passing. Um, I think uh, Rowe looked very good when he came on in the second half as well. Came on in about the 65th minute, I believe, uh, for Scott Coldwell. And he performed really well. He actually got the two assists, one for Diego, one for Zahibo as well. Um, obviously, we've seen a few minutes from, from Nemeth as well. I could Dello on the pitch. Um, but for me, it was a, it was a really good performance. Uh, Zahibo was a standout performer for me in that match. You know, just seen a very good, solid performance from him. Uh, almost playing as a the CDM on his own. Caldwell was playing slightly more advanced. It almost looked like he was playing a 4-1, 4-1 at some points. Uh, but very, very solid performance. His, his, his kind of, you know, display of, of passing and his distribution was, was spot on. I think Bunbury had a good game. You know, he, he, he put himself about a lot, which he does do not of aim. Again, still not clinical enough for me as a striker, as an out-and-out striker, but did really well. I think we've seen a lot from Casido as well. I think Panilla was kept quiet during the game. I still think he had a, a good game, but I think it was one of the games where you know our team's starting to kind of find him out now, kind of know what he's about. 
and it was kept a little bit quieter than what we we are are used to seeing from him. But you know, he still he still played really well. I think he had a seventy eight percent pass succession uh, success rate as well. Two shots, one of them was on target, and uh, yeah, he, he still had a, a good game. But I just don't think it was as good as what we've seen from from previous rates. Uh, as I said, Zahibo was probably the man of the match for me in that one. Eighty five percent pass success as well. Five shots, three of those on target. And obviously grabbed himself his, his first goal in the Revolution. Um, from a Montreal impact, you know, even with 11 men on the pitch, I think we probably had enough to kind of see the game through. Obviously, we had a lot of possession, a lot of shots. But I still think, I think even with 11 men on the pitch, I think uh, the Revolution would have won the game. But then obviously played against Dallas. Uh, again, obviously a home match this time round. Um... I don't know what to say about this performance because for me it just this one kind of I think it was a very similar performance to what we did against Montreal but for some reason we just didn't show that killer kind of threat that we again maybe it's because we're against 10 men I'm not too sure but I don't know it, we, we just weren't playing on the day we had opportunities had a lot of opportunities um I believe it was about about 21 shots but only six of them on target compared to I mean, Dallas had about 11 shots and five of those were on target. So their ratio was, was much better. We had a, a higher, you know, pass succession of 80% and obviously a, a lot more. We had actually loaded the ball. I think we had like 63% of the, the overall possession there. Um, but, yeah, it still kind of showed our frailties at the back. I think Somi and, and Annie Barbar, for, for me in this match, were, were slightly caught wanting at some points. Um Coming off the back of a very you know man of match performance, which I gave him last time, Zahibo, not as as impactful again in this match as he was. Still had a high pass success rate, it was eighty two percent. But he kind of definitely was more involved in the the defensive role in in this match than he was in the prior game. Purely probably because obviously they had a, a man down. Uh, but this game for me really showed that for for me, Teal Bunbury is not a striker. I mean, if I was doing my, my player rating, I would give him a five in this match. I, just, I think, you know, he's it just wasn't good enough. I mean, I think he had three shots. Two of them were on target. But they weren't really, you know, decent attempts. It was, I don't know. He, again, he was he was coming to get the ball. He was coming deep to get the ball and trying to make stuff happen. But I, I don't, it just showed for me that he's almost a player that plays off a striker rather than the actual out and out striker. He's not a target man. He's not a poke. Well, Maybe he's a poacher, but he's he's not a focal point for a team up top for, for me. He's like a number, number you know, he's a, maybe a false nine, I don't know, he's, but he's not an out-and-out striker. Uh, Penny had a much better game in this one for me. Um, he put in a good, really, really good shift. Uh, and, uh, yeah, kind of, you know, started to look like in, in the last but dual game, I think they kind of kept it quiet. I think they were obviously very wary of him. And, you know, I've kind of mentioned that teams might be figuring out, but this game, kind of, we've seen the opening era back again. And it was, uh, I think it was quite pleasing to see. And, you know, he did, he did really well. I think, obviously, for, for me, when Agadello came on uh, for Coldwell, I believe it was, which looked like a different team, um, I was kind of glad that, that Friedel did that change very early on. He didn't wait. It wasn't one of these ones where you know we have to wait to the 60th minute. It was on the you know it was second half and and, and um, Agadello came on again. Then I've got some minutes under his belt. Didn't have the best performance to be fair. Um, I'm not too sure if this whole trade talk might be having an effect on him because we've seen much better performances from Nemeth and I was kind of quite glad to see when I seen his you know number be bought bought up on the board and I thought yes, got to get you know good see a good few minutes from from Nemeth here and then. Didn't really come to fruition, unfortunately. Um, obviously, no Kyle and Rowe on the bench for this match because supposedly he's out with a, a niggling knee injury. Uh, Cody Cropper still out with concussion as well. Um, but only utilising the two substitutes, which again, you know, we, we're we're one 0 down now. You know, and then we bring on. Yes, fair enough. We take Bumbry off. We bring Nemeth on. That's not really working. Not, you know, the, what, you know, Nemeth's not really doing what we wanted to do. And you've got to look at the bench there and think, OK, well, what options have we got? We've got Zachary, which, again, not proven. He's not a game-changer for me. Brandon Boy could in the future be, and I think this is an opportunity for us to possibly bring on Brandon Boy 
and, and you know um, you know releases raw potential on this game you know 10 minutes to go play him in a more advanced position leave for on maybe take off Diego who had a you know not his best game at all maybe take Diego off give give by 10 minutes on the, on the right put Casino in the middle maybe I'd, there was there was options there for, for me um, and I think Brad could have utilised them better but uh, still not the worst performance yes it was a loss but there's still a lot of positives to take away from it the high press thing which everyone's talking about you can see it is working it is still a work in progress uh, but for me it still scares me that how you know unsure we are at the back at, at times and as I said I think so I mean Anibaba I mean Anibaba has been one of my standout performers um, so far this season he's you know not a player that would have named him a starting 11 but now at the back for me he's and one, it's Turner, then Annie Barbar. That's how how I how my starting eleven goes. Um, so me not the best game either, but I thought you know Diana had a um, uh, Claude had a, a really good game, and to fair, I think Farrell had a, a pretty good performance as well. But disappointing, nonetheless, to obviously to pick up our first loss since obviously the opening game of the season against Philadelphia Union. But obviously we've got to go, go on to, no, we're not going to dwell on that one too much. It's still, you know, we're sitting third in the Eastern Conference, I believe, still. Um, and we are going now up against Columbus Crew. Now, it is an away match. It's quite even, I think, between us and Columbus. I think it's uh, nine wins each. I think we've got nine, three, and nine. So, I think this game could obviously go either way. Yeah, it's it's quite a hard one to call for me. Um, that last time I got out against Columbus Crew, uh, obviously we played them at home in Foxborough in 2017 season. We did actually pick up a 2-1 victory uh, for Nuggers grabbing a brace in that one off a, uh, coming from behind after Kamara grabbed a goal from them in the 20th minute. And then before then, last time we actually played, uh, faced them at their ground, though they did actually pick up a 2-0 victory at Kamara and Higuain scoring from them on that occasion. Uh, and to be fair, I don't think we've actually beaten them in some time. I think the last time was in 2014, if my information serves me correctly, was the last time we actually beat them uh, at their ground, which was uh, Charlie Gr- Davies grabbing a brace, uh, Tyranny with a goal, and Lee Wynn as well. Um, so yeah, it's been a while. You know, does that mean it's on the cards this time round? Possibly, yes. Fingers crossed it will do. Uh, for me, I'm going. I, I'm going to. Go, I'm always going to go for a new revolution. Obviously, they're sitting just behind us in fourth position. So obviously, a win here would be is vital for us. I'm going to go for a, a, a 2-0 victory to the Revolution. I'm going to go for another Matt Turner sh- uh, sh- shutout again. Hopefully I'll keep a clean cheek because he is my Fantasy League f- football goalkeeper. I've completely forgot the words then. Uh, so hopefully he'll keep a clean sheet for me there. I'm going to go for a, a 2-0 victory and I'm going to go for uh, a Christian Pinea and a Juan Agadello goal for New England Revolution. In terms of lineup. I don't think he's going to change too much, to be fair. And there's an opportunity where you know, Andy Barba didn't have the best game. You know, does Tony come back in? But for me, I, I don't think it's as easy as that. Uh, I'm going to go for a quite straightforward. It's going to be Turner at the back. Going to, uh, right back, we're going to go for Andrew Farrell. Uh, we're going to go for Andy Barba, Claude and Somi still. That back line, I don't think, needs to be changed at the moment. I'm going to go for Wilfred Zihibo sitting in front of those as the central defensive midfielder. And then I'm going to go... Uh, this isn't going to happen. This is what I want to happen, though. I'm going to go for a three in front of that of Calderwell, Casido, and uh, Diego. And then up top, I want to go Wagadello and Christian Pierre playing just off of him. So bringing him off from the wing, seeing if that works. If not, then maybe swap him and Diego out. Um, I think that could be an option. But I'd just like to see how Christian Pierre does as, you know, as a more advanced inside player because he's got the pace so I'm thinking we could exploit that with balls over the top I'm not too sure but maybe him playing there or if not obviously we could play Diego in just off Agadello the lineup that I think it will be will probably actually so that's the lineup I'd like it to be however I think the lineup will be Turner, Somi, Claude, Anibaba, Pharrell, Zahibo, Casido, Caldwell, Diego, Penia and then Tilburn up top by himself so it'll be a kind of 4-1 Four one formation again. I think it'll basically be exactly the same lineup as what we've seen against Dallas. If not, then you know maybe Neymar's got a shout. Maybe you know Tony's got a shout coming there. 
maybe Brandon bai has got an opportunity to come in at some point. Who knows? And we're not too sure, obviously, on on, on Kyle and Rowe or even the whole Lee Wynn situation as well. So, be really interesting to know your thoughts on how you think the Revolution will line up. As I said, I think we'll. I want us to line up with a a four one. 3-2 formation. I don't think it will happen, but that's kind of our what's happening. We're going for a 2-0 victory over Columbus as well with goals from Pinia and Agadello. Obviously, let me know your thoughts on your predictions of the scoreline as well. But guys, that pretty much wraps it up for today's episode. Hopefully, you've enjoyed this one. Um, I've, you know, I'm trying to keep these as short as I kind of can. Hopefully, you guys will enjoy them more. If you don't want to hear me kind of ramble for longer and go in a little bit more depth, bring back the player ratings, then please just let me know over on social media. Uh, get involved with the uh, at any Rivers UK as much as you can. But anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap this one up. As I said, I ramble for far too long as it is. Hopefully you guys are all doing well and uh, stay safe and have a nice weekend.